I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul. With all that is within me, I will bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. He forgives our sins and heals all our diseases. He redeems our life and crowns us with his love and compassion. What an awesome God we serve. Glory be to God. Welcome today, friends, family, relatives. I am the Reverend Dr. Redonia Thomas, the pastor of Bethlehem and Laurel Creek United Methodist Church. We are one church in two locations, serving the Greenville, South Carolina community. I have a powerful word for you today. I just invite you to just relax, get your Bibles out, and follow along as I read to you the scripture for today. Philippians chapter 12, verse 13. I'm sorry. Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 through 13. This is a very familiar passage. Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 through 14. But I trust that God has a new word from this scripture for you today. Hear the words of the Lord. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. This is the word of God for the people of God. Say thanks be to God. Let us pray. Precious Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for another day to hear from you, Holy Spirit. We invite you to speak to us through this word, right where we are, right at this point and time in our life, oh God. We need a word from you. I yield, Holy Spirit, speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, I've chosen for a title, Do You Know the Secret? Do you know the secret? There's a story of two teardrops that are floating down the river of life. One teardrop says to the other, who are you? I'm a teardrop from a girl who loved a man and lost him. And the other teardrop said, who are you? And she said, I'm a teardrop from the girl who found that man. My friends, contentment is hard to find. We go after what we think will make us happy, only to learn that it didn't work. In fact, many times we are going after the wrong things, seeking to fulfill the wrong purpose. Gord McKenzie worked at Hallmark for more than 30 years. He did a lot of creative work with elementary school kids. He observed something that was very fascinating. He would ask the kids, how many artists are there in the room? And Gordon said the pattern of response never varied over his 30 years. The first grade entire class would wave their hand. In the second grade, about half the kids would raise their hands. When, when Gordon would ask, how many of you are artists there are in the room? By the time it got to the third grade, maybe 10 out of 30 would raise their hand. And by the time he got to the sixth grade, my God, he would get maybe one or two very reluctant hands. There is so much pressure to be what the world wants us to be. 
pressure to fit in. Pressures arise that destroys our own creativity, the natural gifts and abilities that God has given us. Pressures that destroy our dreams, our purpose, and our passion. God made all of us different with a different calling and special anointing for our calling. We are tied up, tangled up, and held captive by our need to fit in, our need to be satisfied and content. Jesus came to set captives free, not just from sin, but also to release us to our God-given potential and to trust God with our life. Scriptures tell us that Paul was under house arrest, a prisoner in Rome, when he was writing this letter to the Philippians, he was writing to thank them for their financial support and their financial support and encourage them in their spiritual walk, in their faith. Paul was doing what God had anointed and appointed him to do. He had been through the fire. He had been through the storm, many hardships, troubles, and trials. You know what I'm talking about. As soon as you get over one hurdle in your life, it seems here comes another. We thought we had planned well for COVID-19, and here comes what they call the first wave. My God, what's the second wave going to be? Paul had been through some difficult times, but he had to learn. He had to learn, my brothers and sisters, how to cope. He had to learn how to deal in life and how to be content. Sometimes situations come around again and again so that we can learn from them. Many would say the key word in our scripture today is learn. Sometimes he was in poverty. Sometimes he was in prosperity. COVID has taken some of us from poverty to prosperity, those who had the right um, items that were needed in the market today. But some of us have gone from poverty. Some of us have gone from um, prosperity to poverty. Paul learned that he had to go through, but in his going through, he learned how to get through. If you go through something enough, you're going to learn. Paul had found the secret, and Paul shares this secret while writing to the Philippians. He said, I have learned the secret. Oh, my friends, do you know the secret? Not everybody is going to tell you the secret, but Paul was telling a secret. You see, Paul had learned that through every trouble, every trial, and every tribulation, as he walked with God, he learned that God and God alone was in control. Paul learned the secret, and so can we. What is that secret? The secret is, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. I can do all these things, whatever these things are that you are facing. You can do them through Christ, he will give you the strength. Life will get hard, but God who calls you will give you what you need to get through, to overcome every situation. People say, ain't God good? Have you ever heard that? Ain't God good? Well, when there's an unexpected check that comes in the mail, oh, God is so good. But let an unexpected bill come. You don't hear that same thing. Things may not look good, but God is still good. We need to learn that God is a good God. Like Paul, we can learn that the world cannot completely satisfy us. And our will and our way are not enough to make us happy. I'm talking about being content. 
wherever you may be right now, whatever may be going in, on in your life, there are many reasons to feel discontent. If our contentment is anchored to material things, to money, to jobs, to cars, or our health, relationships, and on and on, if our contentment is anchored to anything except Christ and his plan and his purpose, we're in for a rough ride. But in Christ Jesus, we can walk in his peace, whatever the circumstances, God will make a way. Walking in our purpose, wherever it leads us, or however difficult it may be, because we have taken hold of the secret and found our strength in the sovereign God. I believe that we can never be content until we are in God's purpose. Augustine, a great theologian said, you have made us for yourselves, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until it finds their rest in you. Paul could be content even in hardship because he was doing exactly what God had created him and anointed him to do. All through the Bible, ordinary people accomplished great things because they were operating in the thing God called them to do and God gave them strength. Moses faced the mighty Pharaoh and led a nation out of slavery. Joseph sold by his jealous brothers, became second in command of a great nation and kept a continent from starving. David, a boy, faced a Philistine giant who threatened Israel and defeated him with a sling and one stone. An ordinary girl named Mary gave birth to the savior of the world. All of them endured hardship all of them went through trials and tribulation and all are testimonies to the power of an awesome God, an awesome God who calls us for his purpose and strengthens us to see beyond earthly circumstances, to reach above and beyond, to walk in unlimited possibilities. The angel told Mary, with God, all things are possible which is to say, with God, nothing is impossible. We can do all these things through Christ who strengthens us. When Jesus stepped out of the tomb on the third day, the word impossibility should have been deleted from every Christian's vocabulary. In the book of Judges, chapter 7 tells us of Gideon, a judge who had an army of 32 thousand men. And he was still greatly outnumbered by the Midianites. God said to Gideon, you have too many men for me to deliver Midian into your hands. Now I can hear Gideon say, God, you mean too few. It's not enough of us. But God told Gideon to let go of anyone who's afraid. And that day he lost two thirds of his army. Now Gideon is down to 10,000 men. Then the Lord said, there are still too many. So when Gideon's army goes to drink um, from, the, from the lake or the river, God tells him to dismiss the men who drink like a dog. That leaves Gideon now with 300 men. The odds had to be like a million to one. Then God tells Gideon, he tells him to attack the Midianites with trumpets and jars. It seemed impossible to win with that battle plan and with those odds. But Israel defeated their army. By God's help, they won the battle. God said, if I let all of you fight the Midianites, all 32,000, the Israelites would boast. They would go around boasting to me that they saved themselves by their own strength. 
Are you looking at some impossible odds right now? We're in a very difficult season, and I'm sure you have been faced with some difficult odds. The impossibility, things that are impossible, is God's chance to work a miracle in your life. Are you praying for less confusion with people on the job? Are you praying for a job? Are you praying for housing? Are you praying for your church? How about more money in the bank? A nice, comfortable life or just a, a life where you and your family can eat and have just have food on the table? God may want to stack the odds against you, to move you, to stretch you, so that you will trust him. God may want to get you out of your comfort zone and challenge you to be bigger and better, to have more faith. Oh, I, I want you to understand that God is still in control. Bold prayers, that's what we've got to pray. Bold prayers, they honor God. Maybe you should be praying like Peter or Paul for your situation, like Paul for a new missional journey opportunities, like Moses for courage and strength to lead people into new territory. Maybe you should be praying for new and limitless possibilities to reach people, young people for God, purpose for God's kingdom. It's 12 o'clock. Maybe you need, to, you need to be praying some bold prayers so that you can see a miracle in your situation right now. Ask God for what you need. The church needs some bold prayers right now for our healing for our nation. from this pandemic, the racial pandemic, for the housing issue. We need bold prayers because different situations are ravaging our country right now. We need some bold prayers who will pray bold prayers. Bold prayers honor God. They are Prayers who he delights in, doing what you're asking for. Because you can't boast that it's about you. You did it when you pray bold prayers. Strengthening you to do what others deem impossible. That's a bold prayer. Growing you for limitless possibilities. You have been created and called for God's purpose. And God is in control. Let's trust him. God will get the glory. Let Paul's secret be your secret today. That God gives us the strength to overcome the challenges that we're having to face in this world today. Obstacles and to be successful in wherever he causes our foot to tread. Trust God. Lean on God. Learn that there is a secret that will get you through the days, the nights that will get you through the hard places. There's a secret that will take you higher than you've ever been before. There's a secret that will lead you into greater depths of ministry with peace and contentment. God's plan is big. Possibilities with God are limitless. But when you know the secret, when you have the secret, my friend, you can do all these things through Christ who gives you strength. Amen? Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for the secret Paul shares for navigating this life. 
Let the secret remain in us that we might have success in whatever ways life challenges us. Strengthen us. Move by your Holy Spirit to work your work in our situation. Heal us. Heal our families. Heal our nation, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the God of love, the Lord of grace and mercy, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rule over you and keep us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. God keep you.